The following worship service is paid for by Main Street Living. Today on Main Street Living. Dear Church, Bride of Christ, Jesus is risen from the dead because He wants to be with you. The worship service will begin after our opening hymn. of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean, 
We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake God forgives us all our sins. To those who believe in Jesus Christ, he gives the power to become the children of God and bestows on them the Holy Spirit. May the Lord, who has begun this good work in us, bring it to completion in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. The epistle reading is from 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 51 through 57. The Apostle Paul writes, Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye at the last trumpet... For the trumpet will sound, and the dead will be raised imperishable, and we shall all be changed. For this, perishable bo- for this perishable body must put on the imperishable, and this mortal body must put on immortality. For when the, Im- when the perishable puts on the imperishable, and the mortal puts on immortality, Then shall come to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is your victory? O death, where is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel comes from John chapter 20, beginning at the first verse. Now on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb early, while it was still dark. And she saw that the stone had been taken away from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. So Peter went out with the other disciple, and they were going toward the tomb. Both of them were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. But stopping to look in, he saw the linen cloths lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came, following him. And he went into the tomb, and he saw the linen cloths lying there, and the face cloth which had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen cloths, but folded up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple, who had reached the tomb first, he also went in, and he saw and believed. For they as, for they as yet did not understand the Scripture, that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples went back to their homes. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. And as she wept, she stooped to look into the tomb. And she saw two angels in white sitting there where Jesus' body had been laying, one at the head and one at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. Having said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you seeking? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Aramaic, Rabboni, 
which means teacher, Jesus said to her, Do not cling to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father, but go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and to your Father, to my God and to your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And that he had said these things to her. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day He rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence He will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. In the name of Jesus, amen. I hardly ever get to see you anymore, he told her. It's just one thing right after another. You've got some meeting, uh, an important presentation, you're, you're off on some trip. Well, we knew that this was going to be a busy job. She told him, trying to stay calm, but she could already feel her blood pressure rising. Oh, this is beyond busy, he said. It's, it's like we're roommates. You're my wife, but, but, but you're, you're my, my, my roommate. We have opposite schedules. I don't even see you anymore. Well, how am I supposed to answer that? She said to him, now with her heart beating in her ears... We knew that this was going to be a, a busy job, and this is why I studied. This is why I went to school and, and worked so hard. This is why I took that internship in D.C., so that I could get this job. Oh, yeah, you've told me this is your dream. I didn't do this for myself. I did this for us, so that we could have this life. We couldn't pay for your school without this job. We couldn't pay for this house or these cars. We couldn't pay for any of these things. I don't care about these things. I care about you. I want to be with you. I want to be with you. He said to his bride, I want to be with you. Dear church, bride of Christ, Jesus is risen from the dead. 
Because he wants to be with you. How do you see yourself in relation to God? Do you see yourself over God? Do you see yourself from God? Do you see yourself for God? Or do you see yourself under God? Christian author Sky Jatani uses these four categories in his book titled With. And he challenges us to think about our relationship to God. How do you see yourself in relationship to God? Do you see yourself under God or from God? For God or over God? A recent study showed that most American teenagers see themselves as either over God or from God. What that means is is that they see God something like a divine butler or a spiritual therapist. As a, as a butler, they, these Christian teenagers, these religious teenagers, saw themselves as over God, that God was their servant, that he w- they would go to God for prayers and God would answer their summons, sort of like a butler ans- answers the summons of a, of a master. Or maybe they saw themselves as from God. God was like their spiritual therapist, and they would go to God for help, but the whole point of going to a therapist is not to stay with them in their office forever, but to go from them. And that's how these Christian teenagers saw themselves with God, that they would go from God, that he helped them. But the point is not to stay with God, but to go from him. How do you see yourself in relationship to God? It's not just teenagers who see themselves in relationship to God, either over him or from him, I was speaking to a long-time Christian who described their relationship to God something like you would describe your relationship to a financial advisor. For example, you go to your financial advisor to get advice on how to prepare for retirement. So also you would go to your pastor to get advice on how to prepare for an eternal retirement. So your financial advisor tells you to invest in low-cost index funds to prepare for retirement on earth, and you would go to your pastor to get the right portfolio of beliefs to have a luxury retirement in heaven. Now these views of, of our relationship to God, either seeing him as, as uh, under us or uh, us coming from him, These aren't entirely wrong. You see, God is a servant. Jesus said, I have come not to be served, but to serve, and to give my life as a ransom in the place of many. So there is some truth to to us being over God or from God, in that God wants to help us. And when he helps us, it's all by his grace alone, and not by our works. But the words of the Bible invite us to see that there is more. For example, I have a friend who enjoys golfing, and if you were to watch him and observe him, you'd say he's really into golf. But if you asked him the question, you'd find out that there is more to the story. If you asked him why does he golf so much, he would tell you, well, it's not really that I like golf, it's that I like being with the people. See, golf is a social activity for him. He golfs because of the people he gets to be with. If you had a chance to interview Jesus of Nazareth, and you were to say to him, Jesus of Nazareth, being the Son of God and all, what inspired you to become a human being? Do you think Jesus would have said, you know, I was getting bored in heaven, and I just wanted to experience life as a human being. I wanted to go through puberty and have my voice change and deal with pimples. I wanted to see the Sea of Galilee through human eyes and and then a sunrise and enjoy fine wine at a wedding reception in Cana of Galilee. As I read the Bible, I am certain that Jesus would not have answered that way. He would have said something like this. I came, I died, I rose again for the people that I could be with. 
for you so I could be with you. How do you see yourself in relationship to God? Do you see yourself over God or from God? Or maybe you see yourself for God or under God. Notice how this reverses the relationship. When God is over us or we are for God, we're not, He's not our servants, we're His servants. We don't ask what God can do for us, but what we can do for God and His kingdom. There's also some truth to understanding this relationship to God, but it's not the whole truth. What do these four postures have in common? They can all be a way of using God to get something else that I want. Perhaps I use God for the satisfaction of knowing that I'm serving in His kingdom. Or maybe I use God for some self-help principles to improve my life. Or maybe I use God for spiritual health and well-being. Or use Him for a luxury retirement in heaven. But the point of the Bible, the point of the resurrection of the Son of God is not that we could get something from God, but so that God could get us. And that we could be with Him forever. That Jesus could get His bride, the church. So how does this happen? Let me give you another example. When I was serving in the military, in the Air Force, I went through 21 days of combat survival training. And during this training, we had to ration our food. And by day seven, our food had run out. I was hungrier than I'd ever been. On the hike that day to the next waypoint, what do you think I was daydreaming about? At the campsite, when we set up for the night, what do you think I was pondering in my heart? When we sat around the fire, what do you think was at the center of our discussion? Food. Food had become our treasure. I want you to notice that three things happened when food became our treasure. First, we got a clear vision of food. And then we were united with it later. And then we enjoyed the experience of being with food. Now, it's not a perfect analogy, but there is some similarities when Jesus becomes our treasure. First, we get a vision of Him. We listen to the Bible. We, we learn and see what it's like to follow Him and be with Him as a disciple. And then we are united with Him in baptism. We are united into His death and His resurrection and in new life with God. And then we enjoy the experience of being with Him, both now in His, his body and blood and His fellowship of the church and in the day to come when He comes and we experience the fullness of His presence. We rarely spend time together these days, the Lord said to his bride, the church. She said to him, Lord, I know I'm doing all these things. I'm planning these services and I'm taking care of this household and I'm serving the people that you care about and reaching out to the world. And the Lord said to her, these are good things. Let me be with you in them and rest from them to be with me. This is why I came. This is why I laid down my life. This is why I am risen from the dead. Because I love you and I want to be with you. In the name of Jesus. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Let us pray the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray. 
our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you peace. Amen. Good morning. I'm Pastor Adam Olean, Associate Pastor here at Good Shepherd Lutheran Church in Lincoln, Nebraska, where Main Street Living, Lincoln, is filmed. We want to thank you for watching our program this morning. We pray that it's been a blessing to you. In the same vein, if it has been a blessing to you, we ask you to help support our ministry. You can send donations to 3825 Wildbriar Avenue, Lincoln, Nebraska, 68516. Make them addressed to Main Street Living Lincoln. We thank you for watching this morning, and we pray God's continued blessings upon you through His Son, Jesus Christ, our, His crucified and risen Lord and Savior. Amen. Send your comments and contributions to Main Street Living Lincoln, 3825 Wildbriar Lane, Lincoln, Nebraska, 68516, or visit us online at MainStreetLiving.com. This has been a production of Main Street Living Incorporated in conjunction with the Nebraska District of the Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod and its member churches.